Thanks. Forward to Mac. Hi, everyone. My name is Sarah Stagall. Um, unfortunately, I don't know all of that advanced math that just took place, but it was really, really cool, and I really liked the graphics. Uh, what I'm going to be doing is mainly talking about what you can do with your data, two different data sets to put it together. And this comes from a problem that it, it happened to me in the real world. I was off doing my research, and I was given two data sets on the same topic and the same participants. And I wanted to look at those two data sets together. So what I'm going to be talking about is how do you do that in R? And I'm going to be looking at the merge function. OK, so give you a basic description, as I said. What you're doing uh, with this merge function is that you are able to combine two different data sets that have one common variable. So that's a key, key part of it. It has to have at least one common variable. Uh, these are some of the examples of how you can type it in, but I'm going to go skip to either uh, arguments because I think this is more meaningful for us. So you know what the function is. It's just merge, and you'll continue to put in whatever is next. Uh, right after merge, you need to put in whatever data sets you're going to be using. So data set one, data set two. Following that, you can put in your arguments. And the ones that I'm going to be really talking about is the all argument, which means do it for all of the data. <laughs> OK? So that's the only one that really pertained to me. So I really went in depth in kind of looking at that. But there are several other ways that you can look at this. You can look at it uh, just merging things on your first data set by using an x, by using dot x. Or you can use dot y for doing things with your second database, database. But for me, in the circumstance that I'm going to explain to you, I'm going to be doing it across all of my variables, across everything, because I want everything from the first data set on the participants and everything from the second data set to merge into one comprehensive file on all of those participants. OK? So I used um, this example that was given by Oscar Torres Reña. Uh, he has a really good uh, group of slides together that actually gives you a lot of visuals. So rather than show that all to you again, I'm going to give you this example. And the link, if you click it, will show you all of the examples that he gives you. And he goes step by step looking at this is the data set one, this is the data set two, and this is what you get as your final picture. It's really, really useful for visual people like me. <laughs> so if you're kind of like that as well, this is a really good source for you. So as I had just explained to you, as far as putting in your information, data set one and data set two, uh, if you put everything in there, just putting in your data sets and you don't put any arguments, what you're going to be getting as your result is just the common cases within those two data sets. So an example of this would be is if I had a data set with two participants and they had a common variable like gender, it would just merge what was common. It wouldn't include all of the other cool stuff that I put in there. It would just be gender. <laughs> so we want to include this all command which is what I'm going to be using my practical example, including all. And we want it to be true. And by doing this, it's going to merge all the cases from both of those data sets, which is really, really what I wanted to do, right? Uh, additionally, I did mention to you that you can do things just looking at one particular data set, like your first data set versus your second data set. And if you wanted to do something along that lines, because maybe what you're trying to do isn't what I'm trying to do, you can do that by including the dot y or dot x in, in your arguments. So there is some things that you can do to make it your own. And of course, if you want to see your data set after you've done it, because I like to, I'm a visual. I can't just trust to make sure that it's there. I have to see that it's there, right? Um, you can go to view your data or just type in your data set's name. And you should be able to just double check which is always good. Double check, make sure everything is there. Go ahead. Sure. Yes. Those are the data sets names. Oh. OK, so his question was about what v1 and v2 is. And maybe I'm just going way too fast. Let me, let me break down a little bit further back. Uh, whenever you're merging two data sets, there's this by command. I don't think I mentioned this. That's whatever variable you're going to be merging into. So for example, if it was gender, you would put in gender as the name of your variable. So you put like um, the combination. You use a little C parentheses, and you put it in your quotation marks. You put whatever it is that you named it, and then afterwards a common, then whatever else you wanted to merge. Because you can actually merge multiple variables as long as it's listed with that by command. Describe, uh, 
Yeah. Yes, so um, an example of two data sets that you would want to merge. I'll use my practical example because this is right along the lines of that. So the data set that I'm using, it was um, multiple, multiple samplings of the same group of participants. But whenever I got that information, it actually came out in separate databases instead of being in one data set. So I, want, I really want to compare you know, between that first testing session, the second testing session, and third te testing session. But I, I can't do that with the way that's currently set up. So I have a bunch of variables in there, like, for example, like score one for the first text testing session. And that second document, I have score two for the second testing session. And I have a common denominator in between the two of them, a common variable, which is like their ID number. So I go with that ID number and I group them, all of those data sets together using the merge command, putting in that common variable in that by by argument, and then it merges them all together. So I would have ID number, score one, score two, and score three, which is ideal, <laughs> rather than looking at a whole bunch of different data sets. OK, does that answer your question? Yeah. Well, we'll kind of get into that a little bit. The example that I'm going to give you uh, using R, I'm sorry. Uh, your question was like, talking about like unique identifiers and unique variables. R is pretty smart, as you probably know. And if you have something that is identical, and I did this in my example on purpose, I called in data set one, I have a variable named variable. I'm really clever. <laughs> in data set two, I have a variable named variable. And whenever you merge them together, what it does is it, it puts a dot x or dot y behind it. So your data set one is going to be x. So for that data set, the variable that was in there is now going to be variable.x. And the second data set that I have, the variable is also named variable. It's now going to be variable.y. OK. Any other questions? OK. I'm speeding along, so I'm sorry. <laughs> Well, um, you're asking about which one, and x and y, which is what, or where is what. So I'm going to go over that by just explaining this uh, in brief. So merge, you're following merge by whatever the names of your data set is. So if you have some extravagant name of your data set, maybe it's testing session one, that's going to go there. Then maybe testing session two, that would go there. And then two data frames. And that's really all that this function can do is just two. And we'll get into, like, whenever we go over the summary videos of ways that you can get around that annoying hassle. If you have 14 databases, you want to have one data set, you'll have to import all 14 of those and then run this function 13 times, which is annoying, right? We'll go over in a video. There's a user who has come up with some function in order to get all of that to work in one command, one little line. But... You would be correct in saying that. If, if you were to have multiple data sets, let's say you have five or something, if you have five different data sets, you have to run this function four times. So you would first combine one and two, then what you created with the third one, and then what you created with the fourth one, and then what you created with the fifth one. So. See, I was not aware that SPSS kind of works the same way as this, because I've never tried to merge different data sets in SPSS. I'm trying to move myself to R by forcing myself to do my research in R. <laughs> so it's a learning curve. But anyways, does that answer the questions that you had about the functions since I kind of <laughs> went over it real quick? OK, I'll continue on, and we'll go past the arguments. These are just the different all arguments. We talked about by. I don't do any suffixes or anything like that. And then this is the different examples I gave you as far as what you were going to be using and what you would get as a result, depending on that all argument, if you'd included it a particular way. Is there any questions on that? OK. 
So we receive v1 and v2 are data. Uh, these are going to be the variables. The v1 and v2 is whatever variable you have that's common in between those two databases. Right. Yeah, so an example of um, the unique variables that you could have would be like your participant ID number. Or maybe you ask them what, what teacher you're taking this test for. And you ask them that twice. You could use that also in there as you know, a duplicate variable that's in both of those data sets that's spelled the exact same way. Mm -hmm. Right. So, but for V in V one, you have like multiple years, like ninety one, ninety two, ninety three to ninety nine. Okay. So in V two, it doesn't start from ninety one; it starts from ninety five. So, does is I going to pick ninety five in V two and align it ninety five in V one? I think that you might be referencing a different command. Are you talking about um, taking, I guess, information from one a different set of rows and then moving information from another variable beneath those rows? No, I think he's worried about matching them. And the, what it will do, it will ignore that data from 91 because it wasn't in that next one. It will lose that. And then you'll match the 95 in the one with the 95 in the next one. So, but what if you want to keep the 91 to 94? I don't know. I have to ask the expert about that. But. Expert does not have an answer to that question. In, in SPSS, there's a distinction between adding cases versus adding variables. I think this kind of gets at what we're talking about. So, does this function that you're going over kind of have the option to either add Cases with the same variables, or or add new variables with the same to your to your same case. Both. That's called so merge your cases on larger variables. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. Right. Right. And that's so this, this, so not this does have the system. opportunity to do both. It, it can add new participants, and it can also add new variables. So in the example that I'm giving you, it was very complex, because we had some people that wanted to go to test session one, and then also go to te test session two. And then some people, for some reason, only went to one and not two. And then some people just went to two and not one. So it actually, in running this, and running this one where it had all true, it'll add whatever participants were there for all of all of the data sets. And if they're missing on one, then it just has an A for all of that data set that they were missing. Thank you. I said something wrong about that, didn't I? <laughs> Thanks for correcting. Yeah. Okay. Was there any other questions before we keep going? Okay. Uh, so I'll get to my example. Hopefully this will work, Mark. Sometimes I get a little iffy using other computers. And and R <laughs> with your workspace. So I'll just exit out of this. And I'll go ahead and open it up just for reference so we have it on the side. Exit. I think I'm making it mad. And, and we just want a small show. Okay, so I'm going to add in my data sets. I've abridged them and basically reduced them down to nothing. So I'm sorry that this isn't going to be very interesting. <laughs> but, oh, where's the import here? Oh, there we go. Thank you. And that's what I want. So my variables, I'm going to have. Um, one that's just an X, and that's going to be the ID number that I assign them. Um, this is going to be their gender. And then I have a random timestamp in here. And then that variable that I told you that I cleverly named variable, that's also in this database. I'm going to import that, and this is going to be data set one. And let's do our second database. 
So very similar. Uh, this one has also that ID number. This is going to be the common denominator between beneath the two uh, data sets. Then I have a second variable, uh, Likert scale, another timestamp, and then the variable named variable. So let's import them both. All right, so we got both of them in here. Uh, so we've just completed importing our data sets, which is the first thing that you should do. You have to import whatever two data sets that you're going to be merging into R. Yes? I just wrote it out, so sorry. <laughs> yeah, so uh, you we have someone that mentioned that you should use capital V, so that is a correction. <laughs> oh. It's a capital V down here, but I've never really could not find function. So you are correct. Always use capital V. <laughs> All right, so we've imported the two of them, and the next part is just to merge them. So let's go back to where we were, and we can reference. What we're going to be using to merge them is just that merge function. I'm going to be naming the two databases that I have. And then my variable name is x, because I actually didn't name it. So R named it for me, and it named it x. So that is our ID number variable. So I'm going to reference that as the common one in between them. And then I want to import everything. I don't want it to just focus on that first data set or the second data set. Every variable, every participant, I want it in there, because I want to see everything. <laughs> So I'm just going to put in this my merge. I don't think I can copy paste from here. No. So I don't know why I just didn't put this in my file. And And I messed it up somehow. Let's see. It's just so huge. <laughs> Does anyone see my error? Where? It's capital X. And this isn't it, but. Uh, you think where? Here? Okay. Oh, thanks. <laughs> okay, so that should be right. Well, let's give it a go. So I think that we have just created a data set, but I think I got rid of the other picture. Let's just view. Capital V, right? So this is what we created. So you should see uh, this is our ID numbers. So this is all unique identifiers. This is our first variable in that first data set, which was gender. Uh, second variable that we had in the first one uh, it was just our timestamp. And you can look at the variable that I named it the same as the other data set. It did rename it to specify which data set it was taken from. So the first data set is going to be x. So after variable, it has dot x. And then it has uh, our other variables from the second data set following that. So the Likert scale, the timestamp. And then the variable, again, where it was named the same. This time it renamed it dot y. So it's from the second data set. OK, if you were to have multiple data sets, for instance, if you had four or five data sets, you have to do this each time for each one of those data sets. So in the document that I have available for you, um, I have some supplementary explanations provided by Dr. Watkins. So thank you, Dr. Watkins, for providing these for us. Uh, they further go over how to merge data in case I'm blur rigid or mess it up. You never know. I could have misspoken somewhere. But these people go over it pretty well, and they actually have people that peer review them pretty extremely. <laughs>
uh, on YouTube, so you can click on them and watch them if you'd like to. Uh, one that I would like to point out to you because I thought it was really interesting is ways that you can merge multiple data sets using one code and a short you know, line. So it's going to be in this one here where it says uh, user created uh, multi-merge. And you can see an example of how he uses it, and he also explains it on his website. It's a little bit further down. But he explains how you use it and also gives you some tips on using it. But he does mention in his uh, commentary that a, wor a word of warning for using other users uh, functions, and he always suggests that it's fun to create your own function. So if you're very eager and very art driven, perhaps you can create your own as well. Okay. Well, that concludes my presentation. Is there any other questions as far as like what I did or what I confused you on? <laughs> yes. Yeah. So the question was, did I actually add cases? And as I mentioned in earlier. I had some people that did not complete one of one of the sessions, and they are actually at the bottom. So you'll see that they have this first three completed, which was that first session, the first variables in there, and this next three variables, those were from that second data set. They just have in a or it's nothing. The, that, that data wasn't in the second data set. Correct. So it, it was in the first one. They had something there, but they never did the second session. So it still imports their unique identifier and everything that they had on data set one. But when it goes to data set two, it's just blank. It doesn't list anything for them because there was nothing there for them. So can't we drop that when you are writing code? Can't you tell, ah, we really was to keep? If you wanted to get really specific, and let's say you had uh, everything set up in your first data set, you only wanted to look at data set one, that's maybe you could use that dot um, x. And that would look at the first variable set. First variable set. If you want to look at the second data set, you could put dot y, and that would focus on that second data set. But it is it is limited to two data sets, uh, unfortunately, which works for me because I only have a few. But if you got a ton, I'm sorry, <laughs> and it might be a good investment of your time to look at that multi merge. Did both that data sets have gender as a variable? Yes. So this one down here, um, I think all of them actually have yeah you know, the variable name itself. But as far as like in the data sets, my original data sets, uh, the two, the first one was more demographic information, so it included gender. My second one did not include gender because it was more just the scales itself. So it is listed in the data set, but if there's information there or not, it's really up to if they completed that first one or the second one. If I would have... If uh, data sets had gender as a variable, would this still have merged? You could do it really easily. Um, remember how I listed? You could put in like two different variables out of variable one and variable two. I only listed one variable, which was that the ID number whenever I did my merge. If you had two variables, for example, if you had ID number and gender, you would put, for example, ID number as your first variable, and then you could put gender as your second variable, and it would merge those two together if it was in both data sets. So the key part is it has to be in both data sets. It has to be spelled the same. It would probably be a good idea if also the content was the same, you know. Sorry, but it is possible sorry. to do those things. Sorry, that, that was my first question initially. That if you imagine to data frames or data sets and you have two unique identifiers in each of the frames, right? Mm -hmm. So why do you have to use the two? You can just use one because one is sufficient to match the two data frames. So here you are using the two, which I don't really, that's why I don't really know what value. Why do we have to use the V2? Because I think my understanding is V1 and V2, those both variables are in the two data frames, right? Right, right. So, and they are unique, right? So, why do you have to use it too? Why not just be one? It's oh, really it's your two. personal preference as far as like how many you wanted to use because you can actually use as many as you wanted. 
if you want to use one, then use one. But if you had in your data set, let's say you asked them the same series of questions, like three questions, every single survey, the same thing. And maybe it was just information, so you would make sure that you were matching them up correctly. Mm -hmm. You would include those three variables in there. Because if you one. use just one, it's going to include them in It will. It'll just put after it, dot x, dot y. So, so the, the variables that you put in there, will, in, in your new newly merged data set, you will only have one variable um, from each data set. That is so, so, so it probably doesn't make sense to just keep that as your ID number, just in case somebody did something like say they were male at time <laughs> one, and then say they were female at time two, then yes. you might want to focus more on the rest of their data. So, so right, my, as a researcher, that's a good question. Yeah. So, so my not, uh, go ahead. My understanding is that uh, uh, the reason it has V1 and V2 is because uh, they might be the same thing, but maybe they're named differently. Uh, like, for example, uh, an ID, uh, maybe in, in one data set you might have it as lower, as uppercase I, D. In the other data set you might have it as lowercase I, lowercase D. Even though they're, you know, they, they, they're the same thing, but it's different names. So that's, uh, so that's why that, you would that's specify V1. Yeah, well, that, that is not a fact. You should make the variable name if it's a process. Yes. So I'm going to refer you to yes. um, the document that I referenced early as far as like explaining it because it's very visual and this person had visual stuff and I was like, I'm going to go with this. So this person has a lot of visuals explaining and actually showing you what happens because I think seeing it is a big part of believing that's happening. So it goes step by step and saying what code are you putting in using two variables, and it breaks it down using country and year. So these are two different variables, not spelled in any different way, two completely different variables. Okay, right. this is my question. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, I can talk to you if we run out of time. We run out of time. We, uh, oh, I'm sorry, it's just so intriguing, merging data, it, right? It is, <laughs> this is anxiety. Oh. <laughs> let's, uh, let's close our video at this point. And then we'll have a quick business meeting, and then we'll do some further discussion until they kick us out. Okay. That sound okay? Yeah. Sounds great. Thank you for the questions. It was very nice.